Hey everyone, I'm uh, just going to run through the new Park Zone Striker Q uh, picked up a couple weeks ago. I've only had a couple flights on it. Um, just going to run through a couple things, uh, some issues that you might want to you might want to uh, mod yourself or fix. Uh, the big one is your aileron horns. Glue them in. Um, you can, uh, or you can get some. Uh, some back plates like they did on the rudders. I'm not sure why they never uh, put them on the ailerons and put them on the rudders. So uh, mine came out pretty easily. All I had to do was bend it side to side like this, and it just basically worked itself out. And uh, there's been a couple instances of uh, ripping out in flight and resulting in a crashed striker Q. So. That's one one modification that I did. Um, some other guys have uh, their clevises have ripped right off the uh, the threads of the uh, push rods, so I put a little drop of CA on on um, each side of the uh, clevis, and you can still make mechanical but uh, mechanical adjustments. But would be uh, a good idea to do that, and preferably you would do it after you have all your throws and everything is set up and. Just give it a little flight, or if you want, I never even, I just eyed it if if it looked like it was nice and uh, perfect on each side or whatnot, and uh, then I just put a little drop of CA in there. You can still turn the clevis to make uh, minor uh, mechanical adjustments. Um, glue the stabs in, of course. There's It comes with double-sided, double, uh, double -sided, like, little thin foam tape. Uh, you put a little, a lot of guys are just running... B to C A on each side here, so you can still break it apart, or if you need to replace the whole uh, whole stab. So, other than that, that I can think of, that is about it. Uh, notice that uh, after a little first couple little flights, paint is starting to come off. Uh, I had it laid on the grass, and the moisture from the um, <clears throat> moisture from the grass and whatnot, I picked it up like this, and when I took it off. I had paint on my thumb, so that's minor. You can uh, spray a little clear coat on on it if you like. Uh, other than that, it's, it's an awesome flying tracks tracks like it's on rails. So get in here now, and uh, I'm just gonna fire it up. So. It comes with a 40 amp uh, ESC. So right now that just gives me three cell warning. There's a little switch on your ESC. Just turn it on. Make sure your throttle's at zero so you don't go into ESC programming. And that's about it. So basically you're ready to ready to go. Magnets on the uh, on the canopy are quite strong, I gotta say, so that's that's always good. I had a little issue, the little on and off switch on my ESC uh, broke away from the ESC so I just put a little uh, some CA and uh, stuck it back to the ESC so that's all good. Right now I'm only have a, um, an 1800 nano. I've slid, slid it all the way back and the ESC all the way back as far as I could and a lot of good little uh, what I used. If you're in flight the battery is going to slip forward so I just had a little piece of uh, foam tape that I use for my RRXs and receiver batteries and stuff in, in other planes. So I just cut a little tab off and stick that there. And it will come forward a little bit, but it won't come all the way up. So you can either take a little piece of foam from the uh, packing box and shave it down till you get it the size that you want. And stick that in there. That would be a good idea, but I threw my all my foam and, and the the packing box away so when it comes to throws if anybody's wondering how to to, to, to measure your throws let's put it like this for a sec and you get a get a ruler and let's see if I can see this somewhere and get a good view just come like this I um, and the millimeters, I forget what the, the default is, but I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 30, 35. 
So if you put it down like that, I usually just put, put your ruler in, in like so, and on the edge, and measure. So I'm on uh, low racer now, and it's like 25. And if I flip the high rates, I'm pretty sure it's closer to 35 or so. So you put the ruler there and just measure in your deflection both ways use the center of this little spine and the, the bottom tab so I went into as you can see I put prop brake on yesterday because I've noticed that um, flying along and, and uh, it's just constantly wind building so I'm just going to try to prop brake and see how that is I haven't flown it yet like that so we'll see let's put it around here again when it comes to the program in ESC, it's once you've done one, you kind of get the most of them are basically the same thing. I'm going to get into the uh, ESC programming. Uh, with this 40 amp, there are seven options. And the seven options are number one is voltage cutoff, number two is brake type, and number three is timing, uh, number four is throttle input range. Number five is startup rate. Number six is PWM switching frequency. Number seven is uh, operating mode. So we'll get into this now. I'll show you. I want to get into the brake type. I already have hard brake set, but I'm just going to use that one to show you because I don't want to. I don't want to make changes to any other one. Just the brake type. So first, what you want to do is put your throttle at 100 percent. Now I've already got my switch on, on the ESC, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, before I get ahead of myself, turn on your radio. And power it up. It'll start like that with the three tones of the three cell, as normal, but it'll give you a different chime, like that. So now it's waiting for your input. You just leave it as is. As soon as you hear that chime, bring your, uh, 50%. Now we're into the, it'll go through the seven with uh, with beeps corresponding. So that was that was mode two, and next one will be three, which is menu three, and it'll go right up through the whole seven and uh, continuously repeat itself. Go back to number one. <clears throat> so we'll wait till it comes around. Now and gets. I want to get to pro, uh, the brake type, which is number two. So when I come around to number two, just move your throttle to 100%. I'll, I'll wait till it gets to number two. That was seven, so that's the last one. So it was number one again, which is voltage cutoff. Now, wait to number two, bring it to 100%. Now it's going to put you into the number two menu, and it's going to give you different little beeps for the four different options for brake type, right? The two beeps, that was soft brake. Three beeps, the next one is medium brake. And fourth one is the hard break. That's the one I want. So I'll let it go around again. It'll continuously repeat itself, same as the main menu. That's one beep. So when it gets to four, just bring it to 50%. That was number three. And bring it to 50%. And you'll get that chime meaning that you activate it. Now it's into the, the main menu giving the, uh, the, the, the beeps for the, uh, each menu. And it'll, it'll keep repeating itself as soon as you want to get into a menu. Bring it to 50%. And then it'll go in and do the four 
<coughs> or, or how many of them there are. The voltage cutoff has one, two, three, four, five. So once you're done, you've already programmed it. So I'm just going to power it off. And now, I don't want to get into programming mode, so put your throttle to uh, zero. Reboot your TX, because if not, you'll get a flashing. Usually, normally on your uh, receiver, you'll get a uh, you'll get a flashing, I meaning you had a uh, power outage. <clears throat> All right, so let's power it up again. The switch is already on on the ESC. Now it'll give you that three and the normal ringtone mean it's activated. So you can see here, I got hard brake now. So see how it stops. That's hard brake. Done. So hopefully uh, that helps anybody out who's wanting to try to get into the ESC but are frightened that, that they're going to <laughs> mess everything up. It's pretty straightforward. So until next time. Cheers.